biomedical engineers apply space-age technology to repair and maintenance of the human body. The greatest bioengineering effort in the world is at the University of Utah, site of the first permanent artificial heart implant. This multi-million dollar enterprise involves hundreds of engineers, physicians, and other personnel working to bring about a new era of medicine so people who are victims of disease or accidents will lead more normal, productive lives. The university entered the field in 1967 when Dr. Wellam Kolf came to head the Institute for Biomedical Engineering and the Division of Artificial Organs. Dr. Kolf's purpose in developing artificial organs has never been mere mechanics. In the future, we will be able to replace nearly any body function that you can imagine. For example, the heart, the kidney, the lungs, the pancreas, uh, the liver is a little more complex. But the question that we always ask is, will what we do, give an artificial organ, give treatment, will it restore the patient to a happy existence? And we try to guess whether we can or not. And if we honestly believe that we will restore him to a good quality of life, that he'll be happy, we should do it. But if it's unlikely that we can do that, we should not. An artificial organ should never be used just to prolong life and certainly never to just prolong suffering. Utah scientists have produced an astonishing array of biomedical accomplishments, including an eight pound kidney dialysis machine, an artificial ear, and of course, the artificial heart. Patients without kidney function dialyze at a hospital, clinic, or at home four to five hours, three times a week with a machine that cleans toxic wastes from the blood. But the new battery-powered portable artificial kidney machine means added freedom, mobility, and independence, encouraging patients to hike, swim, and climb right out of their cloistered lives. The machine has made the dialysis and Wonderland trips possible. Hundreds of kidney patients have received life-saving dialysis treatments in such rugged places as Canyonlands National Park or on the remote banks of the Colorado River. wild whitewater plunge through the Grand Canyon reflects the ingenuity of many people in the division of artificial organs who believe the national parks are for everyone, including the handicapped. Scientists are also developing an artificial ear called inner aid that imitates the functions of the human ear so totally deaf people can understand most of what is spoken to them. One deaf volunteer who has the system explains. As I grew up, I was told that I would eventually lose my hearing. And the, uh, the hope that I had was that when that time came, there would be some uh, avenue by science that would overcome the problem. Uh, it appears that the times come that there is an avenue. It seems to be working very well for me. I'm happy with it. The quality of life has improved, there's no doubt for that. And uh, I hope that I don't forget personally the feelings that I had being deaf so that I can keep things in perspective the centerpiece of the Institute's research effort is the artificial heart. This is our newest artificial heart. Here's the left ventricle, here's the right ventricle. They fit together like this with Velcro, and they will go in my chest like that. Now in this case, you will take out my own heart and put this artificial heart in place. 
and it's operated by compressed air. But we have a machine to do that. This is a mock or imitation circulation. It duplicates the human circulation and we use it to test the function of the artificial heart and also to teach surgeons and cardiologists how the artificial heart works. The newest thing we have now is a left ventricular assist device, which is here and sits in the left side of the chest. It's connected to the left atrium here and to the aorta here. And a right ventricular assist device, which goes to the right atrium here and the pulmonary artery here. Now you can leave the natural heart in space. You don't have to take it out, as you do with the total artificial heart, but you can carry the entire circulation. These LVETs and RVETs, as they are called, are also made by the vacuum forming technique that you see in the background. With the vacuum forming process, a piece of polyurethane is put on the machine and heated. Once it is very hot, a mold comes up from below and a vacuum sucks the soft, pliable polyurethane over the mold. Within 30 seconds, one half of the artificial heart is made. Dr. Barney Clark was hooked up to a large drive system on wheels. The researchers have overcome this problem by building a portable nine pound drive system with rechargeable batteries that the patient can carry anywhere. Inside a large room at the Artificial Heart Research Laboratory, calves and sheep with artificial hearts beating strongly in their chests are hooked up to sophisticated medical instruments. Each animal is monitored and cared for as closely as patients in an intensive care unit of a hospital. Watched over by the attentive keepers for 24 hours a day, every day, the healthy animals eat, sleep, and grow. They even exercise on a treadmill three times a week. Barney Clark was here, and when he saw these animals, he said, these animals cannot speak, but I believe that they feel much better than I feel at this time. This is what you call informed consent. He knew exactly what was going to happen, and he understood it. What did we learn from Barney Clark? In the first place, we learned that the artificial heart was able to sustain his circulation. The second place, we know that the heart inside the chest did not hurt, and the noise of the drive system did not bother him. But the important thing was that his mind was all right, that he still loved his family, that he still wanted to help mankind so that all of the factors of the human mind that really count were preserved. The purpose of research is to create new knowledge and scientists at the University of Utah are pushing forward those frontiers. They are also reminding us that America's genius is far from dead and that science and technology can serve the highest purposes of mankind. Thank you.